Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. Welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted that you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get started in the top stories trending here in Thailand today, don't forget to like this video and do subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when the next episode is uploaded onto YouTube. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast, player as i know many of you do there's a link down below in the description which will take you to a website where you can see all the available podcast players that are hosting the show and finally if you like the show if you'd like to support the show if you'd like to buy me a coffee there's also a link down below in the description and there you will find a website called buymeacoffee.com and you can do all that through that website so now that that's all done and dusted let's jump into the top stories and the first one is in relation to Tanatorn. he's queried over his taxon claims Tanatorn Young Grung Krung Kit, the leader of the progressive movement and key supporter of the Move Forward Party, has been questioned if he has made a political deal with Taksin Shinawatra, the de facto leader of the Putai Party. Associate Professor Sam Chai, who is a Chiang Mai University law scholar, said that Mr. Tanatorn owes other MFP supporters a clear answer whether he had recently negotiated a deal with Taksin in Hong Kong. Mr. Tanaton remains tight-lipped about this very question, and this will only shatter confidence in the MFP political direction, said the associate professor, who stated he voted for an MFP in the May 14th general election. As a citizen of Thailand, I expect to see a straightforward political development, not another political game being played through secret negotiations, he said. According to a Putai source, a political deal involving the forming of a new government was reached in Hong Kong between Mr. Tanatorn and Taksin, who has vowed to return to Thailand on August 10th after living in self-imposed exile for almost two decades. Associate Professor Som Chai said if Mr. Tanatorn didn't go to Hong Kong, he needs to dismiss the rumour, but if he did go and was involved in negotiations, he must explain why. Responding to media reports about the alleged Hong Kong deal, Ryoja Lakkanasorn, an MFT List MP, tweeted that he didn't pay much attention to whether or not it was true. Even if I end up feeling like a fool when I realise I have been deceived and lost everything, my honesty and integrity will still be here with me. And I can still walk with my chin up and face anyone as usual, he said on his Twitter page. And even if this mission is doomed to fail because of betrayal, that will still be better than making it fail due to distrust within the team. Rangsiman Rome, another key list MP for the MFP, declined to comment on the rumour, saying he wasn't in a position to comment as Mr. Tanatorn doesn't hold a formal position in the MFP. Atachak Satan Ruk, a history scholar at Chiang Mai University, said he thinks Taksin announced return to Thailand as part of a deal between him, Puatai, and a side that the scholar described as the ruling class. These sides were in a deal due to their mutual fears that the MFP reformist movement could threaten their political security, said Mr. Atachak. As part of the deal, Taksin will look for ways to divide the supporters of Puatai and MFP as much as possible so as to stall the MFP reformist movement, said Mr. Atachak. So basically, Tanatorn was the leader of the future Ford party that did very well in the election in 2019. But he was, and he was the leader at the time, he subsequently held shares in a media company and was disqualified and barred from politics for 10 years and the future forward party which is kind of now the move forward party was disbanded as well so this guy has no real political bearings uh, with mfp at the moment he he's he's there as a figurehead but certainly he cannot have any position within the mfp because he's banned from all types of politics for 10 years now the idea that he's over meeting taxon who also is barred from politics by the way um and they're all making deals together seems strange not far-fetched but certainly strange on the other hand, all this talk does seem to kind of levy up with the idea that Taxon's planning to return on August 10th. I still don't believe he's going to turn up on August 10th. I, I just don't think the deals have been made. And I don't think people on either side of the political divide here would be happy to think that he's going to spend 24 hours in prison and get a royal pardon. I just can't see it. And I was also reading a, a very interesting article that royal pardons have never been given out in this kind of manner. Royal pardons are always for 
petty crime, things like that, but not for political politicians who have committed crimes and been sentenced. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going on here. This is all one giant big game. And to be honest, if I was a Thai citizen, I would be pretty upset right now. I'm pretty disgusted by the powers that be at the moment and how they are treating the Thai people. But, you know, it's up to the Thai people to also decide when they've had enough of this nonsense. Because at the end of the day, these kind of politicians are the reason, including this tax in Shinawatra, because I, tell you, he, I think he's just as much of a scourge on Thailand as any of these junta leaders as well. I think it's time they all were just to disappear and let younger people take over the country and younger people with fresh ideas start to move this country a little bit further in advance and move forward a little bit. Because I think if it continues down this way, it's just going to end with you know people being worse off and of course well let's say it's if it continues the way it is it'll be exactly how it's always been the rich in this country getting a lot richer why the poor stay poor sometimes i think that's what they want here but nevertheless i'd love to know your opinion on all of that down below in the comment section now moving along and a little bit of sad news coming out of Phuket, but body of missing Senegalese tourists has been found. The body of the Senegalese tourists who went missing after going swimming off Freedom Beach in Tambon Karan of Muang District on Friday was recovered Sunday morning. Lieutenant Jadet, the Tambon Karan municipal, said the body of Chekunya Ba 22 was recovered by a team of lifeguards at about 6.50 a.m. after being washed ashore on Freedom Beach. Police and volunteers from the Kosultam Phuket Foundation examined the spot and sent the body to Vashira Hospital for an autopsy. Lifeguards operating at various beaches have been instructed to remain vigilant, particularly during bad weather, for the safety of tourists, he added. After the Senegalese man went missing on Friday, searchers from the Karan Municipality and other agencies were deployed on Saturday. They expanded the search area to Patong Beach, to the north and Karan Beach at about two kilometers south of Freedom Beach on the west coast of the tourist island but to no avail. So that's kind of some sad news and it's worth bearing in mind and saying this over and over. I talk about road safety here in Thailand so let's talk about water safety at the moment. There are red flags on all the beaches in Phuket for a particular reason. Do not swim. This is not the time for swimming in the ocean. This is not the time to be messing around in water. This is, you know, not the time to be taking your own life into your hands because that's what you're doing when you go out at the moment. The red flags are there for a me me reason. Do not swim. And the Phuket officials are trying to get this message out to everybody. If you see red flags, it means do not swim. And if and there's a reason they're telling you that. Right now we have another huge storms coming through Phuket and other parts of Thailand. It is not a safe place to be. And, you know, I understand that people are on holidays. They want to experience the ocean. They think they're strong swimmers, but you haven't experienced the waters here in Phuket. So my advice to anybody coming on holiday, if you see a red flag, if the water doesn't look safe, stay away from it. Uh, your life is not worth it. Anyhow, we'll move along. And again, sympathies and condolences to the family of Mr. Ba, uh, who obviously was here on holidays and has passed away. Now, another story, and an interesting one that turned up in Bloomberg, but we're going to go through it really quick. Russian elites are transforming Thailand's biggest island as they become more unwelcome in the West. Thailand has been a top destination for tourists, but one group in particular is now flocking to Phuket, the country's largest island, and that's Russian elites. While many Russians are getting turned away from Western countries, thanks to Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine, they're finding a friendly welcome in Thailand. Bloomberg reported on Thursday... From January to June of this year, more than 790,000 Russian nationals arrived in the country, a whopping 1,000% increase from the same time last year, according to the Thai Ministry of Tourism and Sports. More than half of those people flew into Phuket, with Russians being the number one group of tourists to the island, the Phuket Tourist Association said. The atmosphere for everybody is wonderful and peaceful, Yuri Vorona, a restaurant manager in Phuket, told Bloomberg. We have everyday Russians who just want to rest and not fight. And Russians aren't just stopping for a quick visit. A good deal of them are snapping up property too. In Phuket, 338 villas were sold last year, with about half of them going to Russians, according to data from the real estate agency Knight Frank Thailand. And Christian Steinbach, the sales director of the Fawaz Property Group, told Bloomberg that Russian speakers are the biggest nationality of buyers on the island. While the Russians in general seem to be enjoying all Thailand has to offer, the country's ultra-wealthy have also made their presence known. A super yacht 
said to be owned by Russian oligarch Alexander Svetkov, has been seen in Phuket around Christmas and the billionaire Igor Ripkov held business coaching classes there in January. In response to this influx of Russians, Thailand and its locals are adapting to the new population. Phuket Airport makes announcements in Russian now and you can find Russian delicacies like Borsk and Blini. I think that's how you pronounce it, alongside more traditional Thai fare like Pad Thai and Tom Yum soup. There are also Russian bathhouses, Russian rock concerts, and a Russian consulate that just opened this month. If Russian expats continue their migration to Thailand, Phuket may soon be known as the Little Russia of the East. Now that's just a little article that appeared in Bloomberg, as I said, during the week. It's quite interesting. It underscores Thailand's inability to take sides in the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine at the moment. And and this is exactly what you have, have got. Now, the idea to say that, you know, this new population, there's always been a large population of Russians in Thailand, more so in Pattaya, pre, you know, prior to COVID and whatnot. But you know, even the last couple of years before COVID, Phuket was building up quite a number of Russian uh, tourists and it was becoming very popular amongst Russian tourists. Now, of course, many countries now are off limits to tourists, many European countries, and it doesn't leave too many countries for them to actually go visit anymore. And obviously Thailand is one of them because the Thai government has pretty much sat on the fence in terms of the Russia-Ukraine war, while countries in Europe and America have basically banned flights coming in and out of their airspace, uh, Thailand has been open for business. Now, people will say, well, Thailand should, you know, follow the West in what they're doing, pick a side as such. And, you know, I, I, you know, I think before, if there wasn't COVID, I would have said probably yes, Thailand should get off the fence, let people know exactly what side they're on and, you know, be transparent about it. The only problem I see now is that Thailand suffered so much during COVID. Let's in essence say there was for three years there was no tourists. People lost their livelihoods, people's lives were destroyed. And I think the idea that the Thai government were then going to turn around and say, well, we're open for business now, but we're sorry, we're not going to allow one of the biggest groups of tourists into the country and not be able to replace them with some other, you know, uh, sector of, uh, of tourists would be a bit hard to push onto Thai people. And I know that's maybe a little bit of a controversial thing to say or not, but I do think a lot of what's gone on over the last three years played its part in how Thailand responded to the war in Russia. Because at the end of the day, Thailand will think about Thailand and it'll think about the money factor. And it's probably looking around going, well, Russians can't go to many places right now, but they can come to us and we'll be an attractive proposition for Russians and Russians have money a lot of very wealthy Russians. And let's go out and get that market. Let's put more and more flights on. Let's open up and say, yep, Russians, please come to us. You know, we were happy to take your money while the West refuses to take your money. And I think this has kind of played into it a little bit. And as I said, I think it would have been very difficult for the Thai government to say to Thai people, well, all those millions of Russians that are ready to come and get the country back up and going again, we're not going to take because, you know, of the Russia-Ukraine war and conflict and of course especially when you look at the russia ukraine conflict at the moment there's no end to sight there's no peace talks there just seems to be weapons being sent to ukraine over and over again and, and they're really this could go on for another 10 years for all we know and it's a long time for people to suffer and go without a, a daily income because of this political conflict so i think the thai government as much as i think sometimes they make a mess of things i think at the end of the day they did put their people first in all of this they thought to themselves it's an opportunity to make money. It's an opportunity for the country to keep going and to bounce back after what has been a horrible three years. But I'd love to know what you think about it down below. Whether you agree or disagree with me, I I, I always love reading the comments. I love to know what you guys think. If you think I'm talking rubbish, you can say it. But if you think there is some logic to what I'm saying as well, I'd love to hear that down below in the comment section as well. So, you know, we're always free to talk here on this channel. Now, another story, another foreigner dying. A foreign tourist dies after drinking ganja tea in Pattaya. A foreign tourist collapsed and died inside a marijuana cafe on Pattaya's walking street early Sunday after drinking a cup of marijuana tea, police said. The Tama Satun Rescue Centre was alerted at 3.46am that a foreign tourist had collapsed inside a ganja cafe in Tambon Nong Pru of Bang Lamung District. Rescue officials and a team of doctors from Pattaya Hospital rushed to the, to the shop where they found the tourist lying on the floor. Rescue officials attempted to resuscitate the tourist, but he was pronounced dead after being rushed to the hospital. The tourist was identified as Hamad al-Bahir, but police 
have yet to identify his nationality. Staff at the shop told police that Al Bahir was a regular patron who always ordered marijuana tea and a glass of water. They said he never smoked marijuana at the shop. Staff said Al Bahir suddenly complained he could not breathe before he collapsed. Shock staff immediately called for emergency help. And rest in peace to him as well. It's a very, very sad st- state of affairs. It'd be interesting to see what the actual cause of death was. And, you know, again, condolences to his family. A lot of tourists over the last few weeks have been dying here in Thailand. And it doesn't get a lot of play. It doesn't get a lot of media. If it does, it's a little corner in the paper that you may or may not see. But, you know, as I said, it's important that people know that there is always a danger when you go on holiday to any country and to be careful and you know if you're gonna as i say if you're gonna go swimming in the ocean make sure you're a strong swimmer but if you see a red flag regardless of your your swimming prowess you know don't go because it's dangerous and again this gentleman here how often does he smoke or you know marijuana tea he's not even smoking marijuana so something's obviously happened it'll be interesting if we can get some more details in the next few days Uh, but again rest in peace to that gentleman but folks that is it for today it has been The strangest week in terms of politics here in this country, we still, as of the end of July, have no prime minister, have no new government, and things just keep getting stranger and stranger. But hopefully next week and the week after that, we will finally have an outcome to all of this. But anyway, hopefully you enjoy today's show. We'll chat to you probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Have a great day. And as always, stay safe out there. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.